What's going on guys? John Elder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to build the card game War. Alright guys, like I said in this video, we're going to build out the card game War. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out CodingMe.com where I have dozens of courses with thousands of videos that teach you to code. Use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off memberships, all my courses, videos, and books one-time fee, which is insanely cheap. Okay, like I said, in this video, we're going to build out the card game war. And if you played this when you were a kid, it's a very basic game. It's just a dealer gets a card and a player gets a card and whoever has the highest card wins. And then we add it up at the end and we see who ended up with the most wins. So very basic game. We're just going to do a very basic version of it just to sort of start to play with some logic with this card games. Now we did this basic card deck in the last video. So if you didn't see that, check out that video. I'm just going to build off of that and move on from there. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the sublime text editor and the get bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Kinter series over 200. So check those out if you haven't so far. All right, so like I said, I've got the same code from the last video. I've just renamed it war.py instead of deck.py. So what do we want to do? Well, if we pull this game up, we need first off a label here that we can see, you know, each time who wins. So here the player had a queen, the dealer had an eight, the player wins, right? So we need a label for that. As we do this, you can see up here at the top, we've got a running score five against three, the dealer is winning and we keep going. And as we see, you know, the card deck, goes less and less, 11 to 12, 11 to 13, 12 to 13, 13 to 13, and it was a tie. We each had 13. So uh, we're going to have to also build that out as well. Now, I've just put this stuff here in the top title bar. You could easily do a pop-up box or some other label to keep track of this, but just, you know, keep this very simple. We're just going to do it up here for now. So, all right, let's start out with this label here. We need a label. So let's head back down to our the bottom of our code and above our buttons, let's create, I don't know, call it the score label. And let's just call this score underscore label. It's going to be a label. We want to put it in root. We want the text to equal nothing to begin with. And let's change the font size to this, uh, to like Helvetica and I don't know, like 14, just to make it a little bit bigger. And then let's go score underscore label dot pack. Give this a pad Y of 20 just to push it down the screen. And I'm going to come up here. I'm going to make my app a little bit bigger so that it, that fits on there. So, okay, that's good. Now let's come down here where we define our players. We've got a dealer and a player, and we're keeping track with a Python list of all the cards they get. Let's also create a dealer score and a player score. I'm just going to call it D score and P score. And I'm going to come down here and go D score equals. And I think just for fun, we're going to make this a list as well. And P score equals. We could probably just as easily make this a variable and use a counter, but I don't know, I'm going to mix it up a little bit and use lists and append it to that. Just, you know, just to have a little fun with this. Okay. So we've got this now let's come down to we're in our shuffle function here. And so we're starting out, we're creating a dealer card and then come, we come down here and we've got a player card and I've named these card and card and that's okay for the last video where we're not keeping track of whose cards are what I think I'm going to change the name of this to dealer card instead. So we need to come through here and change all the instances of card to dealer card. There, there and there. So, all right, that looks good. I'm going to do the same thing for the player. I'm going to call this the player card. And again, we need to come through here and change all of these cards to player cards. Okay. And then down here afterwards, let's pass those two cards into their own function that we can then, you know, use to see who won, right? So I'm going to call this score. And we haven't created this yet, but I'm going to also pass in the dealer card and the player card. So here, let's say, uh, get the score, right? So, okay, we've got this, but we don't actually have this function yet. So I'm going to come down here, any old where, and let's define our dealer score. And we want to pass in these two variables, right? Okay. Well, we remember the cards themselves are like the five of, you know, hearts or something like that. The ace is the, I think the 14 of, you know, spades, whatever. All of our cards are in this format, a number and then an underscore. 
So what we can do is say, hey, strip out everything after these underscores and just get the numbers, right? So to do that, I'm going to pull in our dealer underscore card, and this is gonna be the dealer underscore card dot split. We wanna split this. And what do we wanna split? Well, we wanna split that underscore. And there are several instances of the underscore. We wanna say just split from the very first one we see. So the nine underscore of, it'll get that underscore, not the second one, right? And what we wanna do is then that will split everything in half. So it'll be the nine, that'll be one thing. And then the underscore of underscore spades or whatever will be the second thing. So we wanna return just that first thing, the zeroth item of this list, which is the z which would be the number, right? So this will return a string. So the nine, for instance, if it's the six underscore of underscore hearts, it will return this six, but not as a number, it'll return it as a string. So we need this to be an integer so that we can do math with it and do some comparison stuff with it. So I'm gonna wrap this entire thing in the int function. Okay, so let me just copy this guy. And we wanna do the same thing for our player card. All right, so this will be the player card. Okay, so now we've got these two variables that will have numbers in them. And now we can just run some logic to see, hey, if this one is greater than that one, this one wins, right? So pretty simple. So let's say split out card numbers. And here, let's say compare card numbers. So let's do if dealer underscore card equals player underscore card. If they both have the same thing, if they both pulled an eight, an eight of spades and an eight of hearts, for instance, well, then it was a tie. So we can change our score underscore label dot config. We want to config this guy, set the text equal to tie, play again, <laughs> right? Or whatever, right? Let's go LF, the dealer underscore card is greater than the player underscore card. Then let's just grab this guy. And let's say dealer wins. Then we can go else and paste this in again. And this will be player wins. Okay, so, okay, that looks good for now. Let's save this and run it, make sure that all work. I'm in my C GUI directory and let's run Python war dot pi. And here we see player wins because we got a jack. If we hit shuffle, if we hit get cards, nothing happens. But if we hit shuffle, this seems to work. So dealer wins, player wins, dealer wins. See if we can get a tie. Tie, play again, two and two. Okay, so it works for shuffle. Now we need to do the same thing for the get cards button. So that's easy. We could just come up here to our shuffle and copy this little guy here where we're calling the function. And we wanna do the same thing down here for that button. So let's save that and run it just to make sure that works. Should work, I don't see why it wouldn't. So player wins, oh, and this thing is gray. Maybe we wanna change the background color. So, all right, we can do this. Player wins. Oh, that's not true. They're both the seven. So, oh, I know what happened there. So we also need to come through here and change our decks, our cards, right? So we didn't do that yet. So let's go, this will be the dealer card. So we can come through here and change this card, this card, and this card. And this one will be the player card. So we copy this and change this card, this card, and this card. All right. So now this should work. Let's go ahead and save it and run it. Make sure that's working. Okay, so seven, seven, tie, get cards, player wins, five, four, that's right. Six, jack, dealer wins, queen, two, player wins. And okay, that seems to work. Let me change this green, this uh, border here real quick because that's bugging me. Let's go all the way down here to our score label. And let's just change the background to green. Save this, run it. Okay, so that looks a little better. Okay, so that works. Now we need to keep track of the score. So we can come through here and then at the end it says no cards in the deck. We don't know who won, so we need to keep track of the score. So 
what we can do is come up here into our score function. Where'd that go? And then inside of our logic here, we just need to append something to our D score and our P score list, right? So if the dealer wins, dealer wins, then let's go D score dot append. And then we want to just append something to the D score list. I'm just going to append an X, right? So we could do the same thing here for the P score dot append. And we want to pass in X. So if you're curious what this is going to look like, we can come up here to our accept block. And here at the end, we could just print out, for instance, D score and see what this is going to look like. It's just going to be a list with a bunch of X's in it, right? Why did I do it that way? No particular reason. I just thought it'd be funny. <laughs> a little different way to count for once, you know, mixing it up a little bit. So let's fly through here. 20 cards, 18 cards, no cards in deck. When we close this, we see just a bunch of X's in this guy, right? So, all right, that's weird. So let's get rid of that. So how do we add up all of those things? Well, we could just count the X's, right? So in our accept blocks, because this is what happens when the game ends, right? No cards left in deck or, you know, game over, right? Whatever. So let's just count those things up. So let's do some logic. So let's say if D score dot count, what do we want to count? We want to count the X's. So if that equals the P score dot count of its X's, well, that means we tied, right? So let's change this root title to keep track of these things. So let's say game over and let's say tie. And here we can just put the D score dot count of X. And we actually need to wrap these in brackets ready to this will be the P score dot count of X's. So that's what happens if it's a tie. All right, let me just copy that. L if D score dot count of X's is greater than P score dot count of X's, then let's see, let's say uh, dealer wins. Up here, let's say tie. So if the D score count is bigger than the P score count, then game over. Let's say dealer wins. There you go. Else, otherwise, let's say player wins. And here we'll say player wins. And we'll change this to P score count to D score count. Okay, that looks good. We can get rid of that. So, okay, let's go ahead and save this and run it. See if that worked. So, Let's go through here. 12 cards, eight cards, zero cards, boom, game over, dealer wins 13 to 11. Okay, now we might also, if we shuffle this as we go along, we might wanna keep a running total as we click these, as we click through here. So we can do that super easy. We can just, uh, let's see, grab this guy here and change it in our score function. So let's say down here at the bottom of our score function, we can output this. And then here, maybe we want to go uh, dealer. And it's going to be D score dot count of X uh, versus what player. And it's going to be P score dot count of X's. Okay, so that should work. Let's go ahead and save this and run it. Uh oh, ah, use different quotation marks there. Uh, let's see, what do we got here? So little quotation marks. Oh, left off that guy. Okay, what else did we do here? There we go. Okay, that looks good. So now save this and run it. Boom, boom. So dealer one versus player zero because the dealer won the first one. We we'll do it again two versus zero and this versus we might want to give us some space there. In fact, let's just do that real quick. because That's bugging me. Uh, instead of versus, let's just put some space here. Same thing here. Let's put some space here. I don't know. 
just playing around at this point. All right, so it's a little easier to read. Dealer one, player zero. That would come through here. Four to three, five to three, five to four, eight to eight. Oh, lots of ties. 12 cards left. Boom, boom, boom. Game over. Player wins 13 to 11. Woohoo! <laughs> so just a very, very simple, basic game. Not much to this, but, you know, we're starting to build out some logic into this game. In the next few videos, we'll get into more advanced games like Blackjack or something. But this is a good starting point since we already had most of this functionality built from the last video. And uh, yeah, why not? So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code YouTube50 to get 50% off membership. So it's access to all my courses, over 48 courses, hundreds of videos, and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learning to code just like you. My name is John Elder from codemy.com, and I'll see you in the next video.